When the university first opened, there was a chapel in College Hall, but when it collapsed in 1918, the university was without a chapel. With the opening of the People's Church in East Lansing, it helped fill the need of worship for the faculty and students. The idea of a memorial chapel was discussed, but it wasn't pursued until a letter was sent to President Hanna. MSU alumnus Richard Osmer, class of 1942, was stationed in Italy during World War II. He wrote his father a letter discussing how after reading the casualty list in the MSC record, he remembered how the university didn't have a chapel and thought how fitting it would be to have a memorial chapel dedicated to the soldiers that died during World War II. Richard's father, Lawrence Osmer, sent Hannah a letter restating what his son said. The original design of the Memorial Center was made of two separate buildings, connected by a covered walkway, formal gardens, and a peace fountain. The original location was supposed to be on the high ground just east of the Beale Botanical Gardens, where the library is now. The location and design of the Memorial Center changed due to funding. The center was being funded entirely through alumni donations, but unfortunately, the Alumni Advisory Council knew they'd be short of reaching their goal. The council made a unanimous decision to just build a chapel and put the International Center on hold. Since the International Center was now on hold, the design of the chapel needed to be changed since it would now be a standalone building. The location was changed to the north bank of the Red Cedar River across from Shaw Hall to help architect Ralph Calder added a small tower to the back side of the chapel. The chapel was dedicated on June 7, 1952. This day is significant because it was Alumni Day slash commencement. MSU alumni returned to campus to meet up with former classmates, partake in activities, and celebrate the newly graduated students. The chapel has a wonderful history, and the walls tell us volumes about the history of both the chapel and MSU. Students come to MSU, they have a wonderful experience. Uh, they leave, go into all walks of life. The names that we see represent those who died for our country. Inside the chapel's narthex, above the entrance to the nave, is a sign that reads, these names represent those who died in the armed forces. The walls are engraved with the 589 names and dates of the men and women that died and uh, we're former MSU students, so it, the, those walls uh, are very significant. 1861 marks the earliest when the first graduating class left to fight in the Civil War. The most recent names are from 2005. Throughout the chapel are 33 stones that have been set into the walls of the narthex, nave, chancel, and basement. The stones are very special. About half are German. Every stone is an actual relic from the cathedral that it's labeled from. Such as Westminster Abbey and Notre Dame Cathedral. One from the White House and a stone from the grave of Henry F. Litt, composer of Abide With Me. Many of these stones were given as gifts in support of the chapel representing the men and women that died for our country, but also for theirs. When the chapel opened in 1952, the only stained glass windows installed were the ones above the chancel. At the time, the council did not have the finances to complete all the windows. As the years passed, individuals and graduating classes donated money for the stained glass windows to be made and installed. The window designs were selected so any person of any faith can enter the chapel and not feel offended by the symbols of any religion and most are arranged into groups of three. The windows on the left side of the chapel represent education experiences as they relate to modern life. The windows on the right side of the chapel tell the history of Michigan State University, and the windows at the front represent religion, brotherhood, and patriotism. What's significant about the windows is the colors are deep and rich. A lot of reds, a lot of blues, so those are a part of the walls as well. But the chapel was built with a philosophy that it's for everybody. And so philosophically, whatever you are, the chapel was built for you. The MSU Alumni Chapel is a place of worship, a place of respite, a place of mourning, and a place of celebration for generations of Spartans. And today it's used for many of those same things, just as it has been for years. 
but we're so excited that it's becoming more of a place of celebration of music. The organ is at the very center of what the chapel does. Weddings, memorial services, holiday celebrations. The organ will support the musical missions of those celebrations. We felt it was important that the chapel have an instrument that was worthy of the lives being honored here. Unfortunately, the old organ had fallen into disrepair. Dick and Mary Jane Northrup became concerned that the organ could no longer fulfill its purpose. They were central in the early fundraising for the project. When we decided that replacement was our only option, we shared our ideas with Ed and Wanda Eichler and with their vision, solidified the design of the new instrument. We like to say uh, storied past inspired future. We definitely see the chapel as a cornerstone of the MSU experience. It's a place that they can always come back to and reconnect with that feeling of being a Spartan. So it's a wonderful place while people are here on campus, but it continues to provide that legacy that really is an important part of our future. The organ is being built by Letourneau Organs in St. Hyacinth, Quebec, Canada. They have built instruments all over the world. The organ they have designed for us is as unique as it is beautiful. It will be perfectly voiced for the room and the specifications will allow it to go play any and all organ literature brilliantly. When we started to formulate ideas for the organ, we also thought about getting more use out of the chapel. We began to envision the front of the chapel being redesigned as a multi-purpose platform that could easily function as a worship space, a lecture hall, or a recital hall for concerts. So what you are seeing now at the front of the chapel is the outcome of that planning. It'll be a versatile space that meets a variety of needs. I think for a lot of students, they remember so much those four precious years that they spend on campus. And the chapel can be just one small part of that. It can really be a place where they can get a break from the hustle and bustle of campus, the pressure of their classes. And that's such a precious commodity in our busy world. The chapel is just a wonderful resource and part of the MSU legacy. Everyone should take a moment to come within its doors and reflect on their time here, as well as all of the Spartans who've come before them and will come after them.